All right, today I'm going to be answering some questions that we've gotten from our Facebook. And right here is a question from Nibin, I believe is the way you pronounce it. And it says, can women become pastors of a church? You know, I suspect with this name, this might be somebody from Africa or one of these countries. It sounds kind of like that. And in the African culture, you know, women don't have the ability to do a lot of things. And even in the U.S. and really among religious people, there has been a rejection of women doing certain things, such as being a pastor. I was raised with that same doctrine and told that a woman could only teach young children, but as a man began to grow up and once he became a man, that a woman couldn't teach a man. And that was from 1 Timothy chapter 2. I believe that that is a total misunderstanding of these verses. Look at this in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 11 it says, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man to be but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And people have taken that and says that right there, it just clearly says that she's not supposed to teach a man. That's not what this says. It says, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp. The word usurp means to take violently or to take by force authority over the man. Not over men, M-E-N, but the man, M-A-N, talking about one man. If you look over in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where once again it talks about the women being in subjection to their husbands, you will find that it says, as also saith the law. When did the law ever give any command that a woman couldn't teach or, or do things like that? Matter of fact, you find in the law that Miriam was a prophetess. You find that Huldah was a prophetess. You find that uh, uh, Deborah was a prophetess and even a general and led out and fought a war. When did the Bible, when did the Old Testament say that women couldn't do things? What it's referring to is going back to Adam and Eve and how that the woman, the wife, was supposed to be subject unto the man, her husband. This is not talking about women in general being subject unto men in general. And see, this is the way it's been taken and they, people just will say that right here it says a woman can't teach a man. No, it says a woman can't usurp authority over the man, over her husband. All this is pointing out is that you don't want a person pastoring a church who the woman is this strong person and her husband is this little wimpy guy over there and she dominates him and controls him. That's out of order whether you're pastoring a church or not. That's wrong. And really the same thing is said over here in 1 Timothy chapter 3 when it talks about a husband, how he has to have his family in subjection and it puts restrictions and qualifications on him about how a bishop has to do all of these things. There's restrictions on a man. If you don't have integrity, if you can't uh, discipline your own family, if you can't control money, if you don't have a good report and all of these things, you can't be the bishop of a church. Well, all this is doing is just saying that a woman, if she is usurping authority over her husband, can't be the bishop of a church. So again, I don't think this precludes a woman ministering. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, it says, A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, etc. And uh, if you take this in its context, I don't believe this is saying that a person who's been divorced couldn't be uh, a minister of a church. It's talking about the culture they lived in. There were people that were living in polygamy and the New Testament church was turning this uh, model around and turning against polygamy based on Jesus' teaching that there was just supposed to be one man for one woman. And so the leader of the church should be the husband of one wife. In other words, there needs to be uh, just one mate, not multiple mates. And many times in Scripture, the uh, scripture talks about man as just referring to mankind, not male or female. So I, I wouldn't argue with a person that says that a uh, pastor has to be a male. I'm not going to argue with you over this, but I certainly am not going to argue with anybody if a woman was a pastor, as long as the husband has not had his youth authority usurped. It's not against his will. You know, an example of this to me is Marilyn Hickey. Marilyn Hickey pastored and was the dominant one because she was a better teacher than Wally Hickey. And so she was on television and she was the pastor of the church 
But actually, Wally was the head of the home, and he was 100% behind Marilyn. He supported her. He was like the administrator of the church, and there was a balance here, and she was not usurping authority, and I don't think that there was a thing wrong with that. Anyway, there's much, much more that could be said, but that in a nutshell would be my response.